The idea of this Let's Play is to talk about the illusion of choice and how it affects the player and the emotional vestment they have when playing. In Life is Strange, the idea is you play as a young girl named Max Caulfield, who discovers she has the power to rewind time and remake choices or actions to get a better outcome. It relies heavily on the idea of the butterfly effect and how little changes make major differences in how a story can play out. Very good, Victoria. What if I rewind again and give him the right answer? Yeah, I wish that we could skip. Now, in Life is Strange, we are led to believe that the choices we make are extremely important and will have drastic outcomes, while the reality is that, much like on a freeway, there are only a limited number of exits or endings to the game. So no matter what choices we do make, they are ultimately not that important. I think John Lennon once said that life is what happens while you're busy making other plans. Max, you're on fire today. All the right answers, good. Make sure you finish working on it by today. I have faith in you. The game's developers created it and advertised it so that we enjoy the perception of choice. We think we have more control than we actually do. We are given the freedom to go almost anywhere and do almost anything. But when we stray too far, we are blocked from proceeding and forced to turn around. This happens until we choose a path that ultimately moves the story forward, advancing the plot, leading to one of the two endings you can get. They deepen our belief in the importance of our choices by allowing us to interact with things and people who may be relatively obsolete to the actual storyline. Okay, Max, retrace every step. I washed my face. I shredded my photo. Then the butterfly flew in. And I took a photo. But because we feel such high stakes playing the game, we are intent on looking into every possible clue. I don't know who the fuck I am oh, or who you're messing around with. Did you get There's that? Serious what are you doing? Here. Come don't on, put that thing down. Tell me what to do. I'm so I need a hammer to break it open. This is one of the instances in the game where you do not have a choice. You must save the blue-haired girl. You must successfully grab the hammer and hit the fire bell before he shoots her. Now let's watch Adrian play and see how she goes about doing this. Okay, 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 okay. I'm so sick of people trying to control me. Get the hammer! No trouble for this than drugs. Nobody would ever even miss your punk ass, would they? Hurry, hurry! Fuck! Someday! For this than drugs. Nobody would ever even miss your punk ass, would they? Now let's talk about the control allegory, or the fetishizing of control. We as a society are obsessed with controlling every part of our lives, and the developers of Life is Strange are taking advantage of that, by making us think that we have more control over what happens in the game than we actually do. The situation is under control. There's no emergency here. Leave Miss Caulfield alone, and please turn off that alarm since that's your job. In her list of lists of interactive fiction games, Emily Short has a section about different kinds of plot structure. Life is Strange features several of these. Although there are only two, the game does feature multiple endings. It also features extensive branching, allowing for the player to go almost anywhere and interact with anything. Having multiple installments and requiring many hours to play through, Life is Strange is most certainly a long-form game. The two most prevalent and important plot points are Many Worlds slash Unstable Truth and The Replay to Solve. Because the player is given so much freedom and allowed to make different choices throughout the game, even though there are only two endings, 
It can be played through multiple times, and the player may experience different things that they didn't before by making different choices. The whole notion of the game is to build around the replay to solve structure. The character has special powers that allow her to reverse time, and the player is forced to do so many times throughout the game. You may find yourself changing your choice multiple times before finally deciding on which one you want. The fact that the player is forced to reverse time and make a different decision could also be seen as the game ultimately having a linear storyline. I don't think your parents will approve when they find out. Now get outside with the class. Please. No, he does not buy that at all. I may have just flushed my scholarship down the toilet. It's this little dialogue that Max has with herself that really forces you to reconsider your choices. As we just saw, Max had to decide to either report Nathan or hide the truth. When you explore both options, you find that you aren't truly satisfied with either. You either get the academic drone re response from the principal, or you get him being suspicious of you. Neither is something that you want. You want action to be taken. And that is genius. Forcing a player to think and having a dialogue with the character that you're playing really forces you to think about what you want and how you would respond to this. Or even how Max would respond. Because you perceive this player. This player is what you impose upon them. Max can care a lot or she can care a little. And that is the beauty of Life is Strange.